him. Any other place that you might be located, I hope that you are having a blessed holiday season and a Merry Christmas. And we just say for those out at the church, once again, Merry Christmas to you. Some of the saints, I know y'all done some stuff on your individual. Um, just bless people on your own, in your own way. So that's kingdom. That's discipleship. And that's how we, we win the loss. And also help and encourage one another that no one will go in lack. Amen. That all will be blessed. Amen. During this time. So I want to thank all of y'all for everything that has been done and all the blessings that have gone out to many of the saints in the community. Uh, the men helped us a week ago. Last Saturday, so I got a few of the men to help us move in. A young lady into her new apartment. She got to be in the new apartment. Um, she had nowhere to stay, but now she's in an apartment furnished that we moved furniture that someone else donated them. Couldn't get it to her. We took it over to her, and she had not only then when we found out she didn't have anything else, some other saints came in by the linen and pots and pans. And they took a turkey dinner over there. Uh, didn't recognize the apartment. She, she is very happy and very grateful for all the kindness that everyone has done towards her and done for her. So you'd be surprised how we touch hearts by just being giving, like Deacon Jefferson said earlier. Um, during this time of season, it seems like people give even, even a little bit more. And I thank God for that. I hope we can continue to do that all 12 months of the year. And so um, once again, thank you, Little Zion, and all those ministries that's connected with us and partnered with us to get that done. So God bless you, and I hope that your Christmas was prosperous and blessed. Uh, let's get into the word, amen. Um, if you would, turn with me. I want to look at a couple of verses before we get into it. But if you turn to 1 Peter with me. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Chapter 1, 
back to the one, verse 21. I, I'll be reading from the King James Version this, this morning. And it reads, for even here unto we unto here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye shall follow his steps. That ye shall follow his steps. Won't you turn with me to Ephesians? And turn to verse um, chapter five, verse thirteen. Amen. Ephesians chapter five, verse thirteen, and it reads. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Aware thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that ye walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns, psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs. And singing, making melody in the heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. I, I want to share for you as we go into a new year, uh, your next step, your next step. Your next step. Can I pray with you? Dear Father, we thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for another opportunity for worship. Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that uh, whoever may be watching or listening or even in the sanctuary, Lord, that it will meet their needs as we go into 2021. This is the last Sunday of this year. And so we pray right now for a touch. We ask right now, Lord, that as, even as we go in to a new year, that we go in with a new mindset, a new vision, a new dream, knowing that, Lord, everything that has happened is beyond, behind us now. And there's a fresh new start before us. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that they no longer hear me, but let your spirit speak. And let them be received by their spirit that they might be the better, might be strengthened so that they can continue on this journey in a victorious way. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Your next step. One of the, the most difficult things in life is when you get to a point that you are not moving anymore. I remember growing up and I reminisce a lot during this Christmas season uh, with my parents of going on to be with the Lord and my grandparents and going on. And I sat there and looked at my children and I looked at them. And now that one is 25 and the other one is 20 and the baby is soon to be 18, I remember the day they took their first steps. And I remember the story my parents used to tell everyone, or at least my grandmother told everyone about my first steps. She said that he was a lazy, fat baby, speaking of myself. If I could sit down and they would hand me a cookie, 
they sure I would surely sit there and let them hand it to me. They said the story goes as much I was so lazy that when they used to stand me up, they would stand at the other end of the floor with a cookie or a piece of candy, hoping that I would walk to them. But instead, I would sit down and crawl, and I had to crawl to them. And it constantly, after time, after time, after time, they said, this baby will not walk. So my grandmother in Pennsylvania said, give me that baby. She came all the way up to Virginia, took me back to Pittsburgh, and kept me for three months. And after three months, my grandparents got me to walk. They sent me back home, and my mama said, I couldn't get that baby to walk for nothing. But my grandmother and my grandfather got me to walk. They said, how you do it? We not telling our secret. <laughs> and so from that, on, that time on, my grandmother and my grandfather took pride in the fact that they got me to walk. Got me to take that first step. Right. My mama missed it because it wasn't no Facebook then. Wasn't no cell phones then. So she never got, she didn't see my first steps. But my grandparents did. I say that because we're in a situation we, we've been sitting for almost nine months. Nine months we have been stagnant and we don't. We've been praying, yes, we've, we've done a little thing, but we have not really been running. We have not really been moving, spiritually speaking, because of the fact of everything that's going on around us. It was the, not only the virus and COVID-19, it was the election, it was the racial unrest. Kids are now uh, sent home from school. They on the ones that are in school. They walk, They doing it on virtual, even at on campus, and and then they walk around campus with masks on their face. And then the kids that are in uh, high school and below, they are on virtual, and, and they going in every even or odd days. Everything has changed in our world, and as we go into twenty twenty one. We can't allow what has happened in 2020 to affect what God has for us to do in 2021. Amen. We cannot allow the things that happened in our past to destroy the dreams and the vision that God has already given us for the future. The year passes and time passes. Time is an opportunity for God to move. He always has a next step for us. He always has another move for us. Opportunity is to define, uh, he, when he gives us the opportunity to find a purpose in a life vision in our, our, our lives. As long as we got breath, there should be a purpose. There should be a life vision. And God not only uses the season to give us purpose and vision, but he also reestablishes worthwhile goals that he placed in us before all of this ever happened. Just because this happened don't mean what he told us in January doesn't mean it's not going to come to pass. It's just part of the road that we're going down. And guess what? God never gives us every step that we go through the process. What he does is he gives us what's the outcome of it. He, he tells you that you're going to be blessed. He tells you that you're going to start a business. He tells you you're going to write a book. But he never shares with us how we get to that point. Ask Brother Joseph. I believe if you told, talk to Brother Joseph, and if, if Brother Joseph could talk to you, he probably would not want what God promised him after all that he went through. He had to go into a pit. And, then, and as a matter of fact, if you want to get detailed about it, they said that not only he threw him in a pit, and no one ever talks about that, they said the brother probably urine on him as he was in the pit. And so, I mean, that's all that nasty past. But I'm trying to tell you how sometimes the process is not so cute. The process is difficult sometimes. He had to go to prison. He, had, he went through a whole lot. He was accused of wrongdoing. All to get to the promise that God, God didn't tell him how he was going to get there. All he told him that the end product was that he was going to be blessed and be able to bless his people and his family. No one told us that we were going to have a pandemic. None of us could even imagine that we had to live through this for the last nine months. And may have to go through it for a few more. And, but guess what? We're still here. God still has blessed us. We, 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 we still are doing well. 
And, and God has kept us even during this time. He's watched over our children. He's watched over our family members. And, and guess what? God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne with all authority in his hand. And he's telling us to redeem the time. We can't get so caught up thinking that we know everything. We got to let, sometimes you got to allow God to reestablish what the goals and the blessings are in your life. One of the other things that he uses in this, when we talk about, when we talk about moving on and moving into a new year, he uses a new year as an opportunity to bury your past. That's why you got to learn how to let some things go. You can't hang on to hurts of yesterday. You can't hang on to things that, that, that bothered you or hurt you in the past. You got to let those go and move forward, move on, because God has better for us. Now, there's a difference here. The scripture talks about here in the scripture, especially in Ephesians, it talks about wisdom. And, and let, me, let me just define Wisdom is applied knowledge. There's a whole lot of people that, that, that don't have wisdom. People have, we, have people, we know people that have knowledge. We have, you know, we have people that have understanding, but we don't have a whole lot of people with wisdom. Well, I'll give you a good example of this. I, I, I see this happen a lot. I, I've been going to MCV or going to some of the hospitals, and then I see doctors and nurses outside the hospital smoking a cigarette. They, they have knowledge knowing what a cigarette does to your body, but they're out there smoking it. That's lack of wisdom. You, you know what it does to you, but you're not applying it to your life. And I, I think if God's going to bless us in the next season of our life, what we have learned through our past, we have to learn, make sure we apply it in wisdom and not just say we know it. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Knowledge is information. That's what's wrong with some of our children. Some of our children got a whole lot of information, but they don't have the wisdom because they, they don't know how to apply it. And sometimes they won't apply it. Amen. You, we can sit down and tell them what to do. And they still go do something else different. <laughs> and then we wonder why they get the result that they get. Amen, Amen somebody. And so, that's knowledge. Knowledge is information. Understanding is comprehending it. Mm -hmm. So understanding, I can comprehend it. So I understand what Sidney said, but I still don't apply it. But wisdom is applied knowledge. Let this be the year of application for us. Let this be a year of redeeming the time. God works with, with our desires and our decisions. He works in his will. And so God wants us to be able to do things that would be a blessing to our purpose, blessing to our friends and family around us. Guess what? When we work in God's will, everything around us becomes better. It becomes blessed. Your life is, is your time. You got to reprocess your time. And so that means you got to make time out for God. John 8 and 45. It says that Jesus, and just to paraphrase it for a minute, it, well, let me, I'm going to turn to it. John 8 45. If you turn with me, amen. If you're there with your Bibles online, John 8 45. 54 times in the Bible, Jesus makes this statement. And I'm going to tell you what the statement is in a minute. Amen. 845. St. John. And what he says here, he is speaking to well, I'm going to start at verse 44. He said, ye are the father of the devil. And the lust of the father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Verse 45, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. I, I, 40, 54 times in the Bible, Jesus tells the disciples, he tells the Pharisees, time and time again, I tell you the truth. Why does he keep saying, I tell you the truth? So that you will believe me. That you will apply what I'm giving you. 
That's why God constantly tells you in your prayers and tell you in, 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 in dreams and visions and constantly tell you the word that you are blessed, that you are his beloved, that you are redeemed, that you are his children. He loves you and he cares for us. Don't make no difference what's going on around us. God does not lie. He is telling us the truth about us. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And because we are saved, we are disciples. We are kingdom citizens. And God wants us to walk as such. Your next step. Your next step is to walk in the power of God. Your next step is make a move for God. Your next step is not to cry about what's going on. But your next step is give God glory and give him praise and worship his name. I don't care if you're in the kitchen or in the sanctuary. I don't care if you're in the prayer closet or even in, 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 in the kitchen in the church. I don't care if you're on the grounds or at home. You are called to give God glory all the time. God calls us for the season as we go into the new year not to cry about our past and what has gone on, but instead stand up and give God glory for all that he's done. He has kept us and he has washed us and he's made us whole even during the season. Yes, we lost some loved ones. Yes, baby, our money is a little funny. But guess what? You're still here. You still got breath in your body. And God still have a purpose and a plan for your life. I don't care if you're six or 96. If you're still breathing, there's a plan for your life. There's a purpose for your life. You can't retire from God. You can't retire from his glory. You can't retire from worshiping him. God has a plan for all of us. He died on Calvary for our sins so that we can call him our Lord not just call him God. A lot of folks call him God. And they put a little G in front of it. But when you make him Lord, he is the center of everything you do in touch. Let me just share four things with you. If you want to really, really be blessed during the season, you got to redeem the time. What, what, what you mean by redeem the time, Pastor? You got to make the best use of your time now. Redeeming the time, all you basically you're saying when you redeem the time, you saying now time is precious. You can't let other folk be a parasite and suck up your time. There's some folk that will do nothing but burn up your time. You know those folk. They'll call you on the phone to talk about something that really don't mean nothing. When you could be in the prayer closet, or you could be studying your word, or you could be ministering to somebody. You could be doing something more valuable than sitting on gossiping about somebody else. See, when you're talking about redeeming the time, you got to make sure Jesus in three and a half years saved the whole world. Let me ask you this question. What have you done in your 40, 50, 60, or 70 years? Three and a half years, we're still talking about Jesus 2,000 years later. And folk are still getting saved. That means I don't need a whole lot of time. I just got to make sure I make the best use of my time. When I talk to someone in the grocery store, it's kingdom minded. It's about them coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's about pouring something into them to encourage them and strengthen them and make them feel like they are, they are worthy and valuable in God's eyes. It's not about, ain't about me going to the restaurant to make people mad and angry because they didn't give me my French toast fast enough. Or it got to the table and got too cold. And I, instead, I caused more confusion than also encouraging and lifting up folk. Let me give you four things and let me get out of the way. I'm running out of time. First thing, were four ways that folk don't redeem the time. I'm, I'm going to go from that direction. We don't redeem the time by neglecting Christ. You have to put Christ first. People that, that, that redeem the time and make the best value of the time, they put Christ first. If you neglect Jesus Christ, you can't redeem your time. You will lose time every time. <laughs> you will lose time every time. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because what happens is, now everything becomes your God and jumps in front of Christ. And every time you put something in front of him, it loses time. That's why it's so important, even with the tithe. The tithe is the first 10% off the top. It's not just 10%. 
It's the first 10%. And what it does is about the tithe is when you give him your first, he blesses the other 90 and stretches the 90 to do more with it. When you give him your time first, that means when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is pray. The first time you do what you give them, not pick up your cell phone, not turn on the TV and watch Sports Center, but the first thing you do is get up and get in the Word of God and pray for what God does. He blesses and stretches the rest of the day. He orders your day. He gives you discernment and gives you wisdom so that you will be able to apply it during the course of the day. Christ has to be first. Number two is this we, um, we don't redeem the time by trusting in our own abilities. We don't redeem the time by trusting all of it. In other words, your abilities does not make you have more time. Some people think the more gadgets you got, the, the iPhone and all this, you use all the gadgets, and, and the more books I learn, the more that I can, I can make my time stretch. No, you, we don't have the ability to, to redeem the time. We don't get the ability to bring back more time or make time longer for us. What it does, it burns us out. The more we try to work out things, guess what? It gets wrapped up. It gets crazy. Our lives get crazy. I, I know for myself, the more things I put on my plate, the worse it gets. And I think I'm organized. I got me a day runner over here, and I got a calendar over here, and I got it on my iPhone and, and an iPad over here. And guess what? It's still, I, when I go to sleep at night, I forgot to do something. Something I was supposed to do didn't get done. And maybe, sometimes it's major stuff. You wake up in the morning, you find out, oh, man, I forgot to pay a bill. Oh, man, I forgot to search and such and such and such. And now I got to run. And so it messes up the next day. Amen. Because I didn't put Christ first. And when you put Christ first, everything works out. But when you try to trust in your own ability to make things grow, to redeem the time and make things work, make things work, you try to take the place of God. The third thing you don't, uh, we don't redeem the time while we live it in sin. You must repent. Deacon Gillis made it quite clear earlier in talking about repentance and turning away from Turn away from your sins, turn it around. It's not just you saying, I'm sorry. When you're talking about redeeming the time, you really want God to stretch your time, you must not be living in sin. Some folk want to live in sin and say they're a Christian. If you know that you're living in sin and you could continue to do that, you have to want, well, I'm saying it clear, I have to wonder how saved you are. You can't live in sin and like it and say that you're a Christian. Now, are there some folk that struggle in their sin? Yes, but they struggle with it and they're trying to get it out. They're trying to work with it and they hate the situation they're in. But if you love sin in it, you have to wonder if you're saved. Because you can't love being around sin and love a holy God at the same time. It, that's, that's a conflict of interest right there. You, you, something you, you, if you're going to be committed totally, and we're talking about covenant, covenant renewal. You, you got to constantly have a covenant renewal mindset. What do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, you're in covenant with God, and constantly you want to renew the co covenant. Constantly want to make sure the covenant is stronger than what it was before. Well, for example, me and my wife were married for 27 years. I gave her another ring well, what, 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 this Christmas. I gave her another ring because of the fact to renew our covenant. That's, what, that's why why. Couples that get up in age and they've been married for some time, they give another ring to their wife they, and, they, and they do different things. They, they have a 50th wedding anniversary party. All. It's a covenant renewal saying, I remember when we first did this thing. And guess what? It's been so good, I want to renew it. I want to make sure it's better the next half than it was the first half. And guess what? We need to do that with Christ. You can't just get comfortable in your sin. So you got to let the sin go out of your life. You got to make a decision that you're going to repent, turn from walking in sin, and choose now to walk in holiness. Walk in holiness. Redeeming the time means the advancement and productivity are, 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 are practical in holiness. So you're seeking to walk in holiness as you do this. The fourth and last one, we don't redeem the time by by setting worldly goals. Setting worldly goals. And we got folk in the body of Christ to do this. They set worldly goals and their whole decision, they're, they're, everything they try to do is to get the worldly goal done. Whatever it is. I want to be a professional football player. I want to do such and such and such, such. I want to be a doctor. I want to do that. 
That's fine if you have a goal like that, but Christ still needs to be first. Christ will help you to get to that goal even quicker. Because the Bible makes it clear. He gives you the desires of your heart. He put it, All that means is that when he gives you a desire, he puts a passion in there for you to do it. But he don't want you to leave him out as you go for the goal. Amen, somebody. And so if you're going to redeem the time, as you struggle to work out your worldly goal, guess what? You're, you're wasting time because you're going to spin wheels trying to get something done that you could, get, could have got done easier and faster if you just sought after Christ. Christ is going to make sure he order your footsteps and, and allow you to get to your goal the best way possible. So what my question is, you said, but your subject, Pastor, was your next step. What's going to be your next step as you go into 2021? What is going to be your next step? After, after I shared those things with you today, as you know, this past year has not been the best year. And everyone, everyone been talking, oh man, this is a horrible year. Oh, I hope we don't get 2021 like this. I hope 2021 got to be better than this. But what if it is? What if it is? What, 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 what if you can't go back to college and can't get back in the camera and you, and you got to still do it virtually? What if you got to do high school through virtual? What, what if the restaurants don't totally open up? You still got to do social distance. What if the churches don't get to open up right away? What are you going to do then? Is God still God? Or has he just forgotten us? I have to beg the difference with you if you think that he's forgotten us. I think God is allowing us a season that we can sit and pray and ask him for our next step. He got greatness for us. He said, our, 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 our latter days shall be greater than our former days. And guess what? I know we've gone through a lot, but guess what? Sometimes you got to go down in the valley before you can get to the mountaintop. Sometimes you got to go through the deepest of valley. We, we, we don't know about struggle. Our, our kids don't know about not having it. And not, they, they ever think that they got free will and they could do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. But if you want to serve God, you got to submit to him and say, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life. And when you submit to him and give it all in him, guess what? He's going to order it out. And guess what? Even in a pandemic. Watch. When this is all over, you're going to see businesses, some businesses close. But you're going to see some businesses thrive. Yes, yes. You're going to see some stores shut down, but you're going to see some stores open up. Yes. You're going to see some schools go prosper. You're going to see some schools shut down. But guess what? Those that keep their eyes on the Lord, those that seek Him, God is still not forgotten about them. But those that are going to do it their own way, they're going to fail. They're going to fall by the wayside. This is an opportunity that he's coming and he's cutting down the wheat and the tear is growing up together. And he's chopping down some of the tear as the wheat grows. He's looking for those that are going to keep their eyes on Jesus even though the storm is going on. And guess what? We're going to watch and see children rise up and be blessed. We will watch them and watch folk that, that, that we counted them out. We thought they were nothing. We thought they were nothing. But they would listen to the, to the ear of God. They would listen to God instead of going off in their own understanding, thinking it's about books and education and who you know. But when you tap into God and, and understand that he's redeeming the time and he's waiting for you to follow him. And as the Bible says in that text that I read earlier in, 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 in the first Peter, he says, follow his steps as he's our example. Guess what? Everything was all right for Jesus. He didn't have no crown. He didn't have no castle to live. He was born in a manger, a feeding trough. He was, his father was a carpenter. His mother was married. And guess what? He didn't have all the riches. But guess what? In three and a half years, he did more in that time than many of us will ever do. Why? Because he said, me and the father are one. We are connected, and I'm about my father's business. When you're about your father's business, God will make things well yes, with you. He will. Yes, he will. Guess what? This is your season. As we go into 2021, I encourage you as in the last few days before we go into the new year, get into the word of God. Ask the Lord what your next step is. He has another step for you. You can't sit there and watch the TV set and wait for the stimulus package to come. You can't sit there and wait for someone else to be able to come and give you what only God can give you. 
Guess what? God loves you. He cares for you. He wouldn't send his son into the world to save you and just leave you to die. I want to encourage you today. Make this the best day of your life by taking your next step in Jesus.